What is up guys? Welcome back to another low level learning tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about pulse width modulation or PWM and how you can use it on your Raspberry Pi Pico. If you've ever watched a tutorial or read about pulse width modulation, you've probably seen a graph looking kind of like this. You know, you have the square wave going on and you have the top levels and the bottom levels kind of going on and off. We're going to be talking about what problems this solves in the world of embedded systems and how you can use it on your Raspberry Pi Pico. When you think of embedded systems and digital input and output, typically you're thinking of what we call Manchester encoding. Manchester encoding is this idea of ones and zeros. The ones being high at 3.3 volts or VCC and the zeros being down at ground. The question is, how do I actually transmit or communicate a value in between there without a digital to analog converter? Those pieces of hardware are typically fairly expensive. So for example, the Raspberry Pi Pico can't put out an analog signal. How do I communicate something that isn't 3.3 or that isn't zero volts? In comes pulse width modulation. And this is actually the scheme invented to be able to solve that problem, right? To talk about pulse width modulation, first we have to define a few terms. The first being the period. So the period of your pulse width modulation is going to be the length of one cycle. So that's from high to let it go low and then back to high again, that, that rising clock edge that notates the end of one cycle. Um, and that's going to be denoted in time. And for example, here it's 20 milliseconds. The next thing we have to talk about is amplitude. So amplitude is just the difference between the max and the minimum value of your pulse width modulation scheme. And here we can see that it's 3.3 volts because 3.3 minus zero is equal to 3.3. Finally, we have duty cycle. So duty cycle is represented as a percentage. It represents what percentage of the period the signal is on and what percentage of the period the cycle is off. So for example, the duty cycles, it is equal to the time that it is on over the time of the period. So it's 10 milliseconds over 20 milliseconds, which is a 50% duty cycle. So to communicate a voltage that isn't other than 3.3 or zero, the equation is amplitude times duty cycle, where the duty cycle again is time on over the time of the period. So in this example, we have 3.3 volts times the duty cycle of 50%. That gets us a 1.65 volt signal communicated to whatever system is interpreting this pulse width modulation. So the question is, how do we do pulse width modulation on the RP2040? It's actually pretty interesting. The RP2040 has a pulse width modulation clock that operates at 125 megahertz or eight nanoseconds per cycle. This clock counts up every eight nanoseconds and increments a counter internally up to the number 65535 and then cycles back around down to zero. So for example, how can we use this to create a four microsecond period pulse width modulation scheme with a 50% duty cycle? The way this works is first we have to do some math and we divide our period time, four microseconds by the clock time, 800 nanoseconds, and that gives us a 500 cycle counter. What this means is we have to set a wrap point where we tell the pulse width modulation counter to wrap around at 500. That will give us a period of four microseconds on the pulse width modulation channel we're using. How do we get from that to a 50% duty cycle? Basically, we take our clock cycle number, so 500, and then multiply that by 0.5, and that gives us 250. That ends up being known as our set point. And what this gets us is a pulse width modulation scheme on the Raspberry Pi Pico, similar to the one before, but with a much shorter pulse width modulation period, but the same duty cycle. Well, let's go program this on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So to do this in C, it's actually surprisingly simple with the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK. I have the code written out here. I'm gonna go through it line by line and explain what happens. So line seven, we are going to choose to use pin zero, which is the top left GPIO pin, and we're gonna tell it to go into GPIO function pulse width modulation. Then we have to extract which pulse width modulation channel we're going to get from that pin. So we use this function here and give it the pin number zero to get the slice number, which gives us the pulse width modulation channel uh, that we're going to use. Then we need to enable pulse width modulation on that channel. So we just say slice number, which is the channel number to true. Then we set our pulse width modulation wrap point. This is the point in the counter that we tell the pulse width modulation scheme to wrap back around. And then finally, we say pulse width modulation, set the channel level of our channel, we say channel A, because that's the channel associated with this GPIO bus, to 250. This will give us a pulse width modulation scheme of a period of four microseconds and a 50% duty cycle. Let's run it and see how it does. Build it. And as you can see here, I've got the Raspberry Pi Pico hanging out. I have my oscilloscope reading it, and you can see that I've got a period of four microseconds and a clock frequency of 250 kilohertz. 
Anyway, guys, I hope that was useful. If it was, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment telling me what you want to see next, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.